this month of October, we are uh, um, walking on the path of uh, Antioch experience, a wonderful spiritual calling that uh, we have obeyed. And every day God is giving us a revelation. And uh, this is um, a season when God has called us at Mizpah to dwell in his presence um, like the Antioch church in Acts of the Apostles chapter 13. It dwelled in the presence of God through fasting, through worship, and through prayer. The Bible says that uh, when they were worshiping and fasting, the Holy Spirit says, I prayed for me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work I have called them. And the Bible continues to say that after they have prayed and fasted, they laid their hands on them and released them. And we see from that point, the life of Paul is changed. The life of Paul is changed. His ministry is changed. And uh, um, it was a wonderful encounter. So we believe as we continue to obey God in this calling, we shall have uh, a spiritual encounter, a godly encounter like no any other. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to put this statement that uh, in every um, uh, godly visitation, there are spiritual accomplishments that God has been revealing to me. That whenever God is visiting, there are things that uh, works through our life, through the Holy Spirit. And I will start by reading the book of Philippians, chapter 2. And verse 13, the Bible says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It is, it is of God which worketh in you in two ways, in two things, both to will and to do. It is God's work to will and to do through you. It is not your work, it is God's work. Hallelujah. During times of God's visitation, during times that we wait upon God in prayer, in intercession, as we see the church of Antioch, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 13, we see a church that dwelt in the presence of God waiting upon the visitation of the Holy Spirit. We see a church that had submitted its own life to God so that God's will will be accomplished according to his own pleasure. I want to put this powerful statement in, through to you. That it is God's pleasure. I wish I'm speaking Swahili. God is happy. It is in God's pleasure to be able to will and to do through you for his own glory. Mungu pahali popote alipo bingoni. Yeye hufrahia nyakati za kukutumia wewe. Kwa njia ya kukuwezesha. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to know there are what I should call here pleasures of God that works through you. There are pleasures, things that make God's, God glad, things that make God happy. 
it is him who wills. That means before they happened, he had, he had already planned for them. It is him who plans for them. It is he who desires that they should be there and he plans that they should be there. Situations in our life, seasons in, your, in our life, moves of God in our life, they come from the willing heart of God. And we, as men and women of God, we must, number one, accept that. We must know, we must understand, and we must accept. And that's why Paul says, it's no longer who li I who liveth, but it is Christ in me. Because it is him who wills to do. He wills and to do according to his good pleasure. I want to put another statement that there is nothing for those who are called by God. There is nothing that happens out of God's will. I need somebody who can agree with me. I need somebody who can agree with me. So, because when two or three shall agree, heaven shall accomplish that. But this is a fact of God. Me as a man of God, whatever I'm going through, whatever I will go through, good or bad, I believe that it is the will of God. Hallelujah. And in that willing of God, there is something he wants to do for his pleasure. Praise the name of the Lord. We see in Acts of the Apostles, after Paul had, had uh, been called by God, it was God's will that he should not go straight away into the ministry. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, we see Paul, you know, after getting saved, he was full of the zeal of, of the calling. I don't want to call it the zeal of God. It is the zeal of his calling. Moto wamuito. And we see him straight away after he has been saved. With that zeal, he goes on and starts preaching. We see Saul, Acts chapter 9. You see? In verse uh, that Jesus is the Son of God. That was okay. Preaching about the gospel was okay. But I don't think it was God's will for him to do it at that time. Because immediately in verse 23, it is says, After many days the Jews conspired to kill him. And he had to run away. We see Paul, after running away and having problems up and down, finally he lands in Antioch or Antioch. And there the will of God starts working in his life. And if there is a prayer I would like to pray among many prayer, is that may the Lord bring you to the place where his good pleasure will work in your life. For spiritual accomplishment, I want to bring several things that happened to Paul and the things that will lead us into our prayer. And one of the things I want to bring to you is that it's as if God waits for you to be in the right place with the right, at the right time, with the right people. For Paul, God had to guide and lead him until he brings him to Antioch. The right place for his visitation, the right place for the activation of the gift of God. Hallelujah. We see Paul is not into this principle in the first, in chapter 9, it's as if he has not locked down to this principle of God's will and God doing for his pleasure. But when he comes to Antioch, it is the right place for the activation of the gift of God. It is 
with the right people, doing the right thing at the right time. Hallelujah. And a few days when I was meditating on this and also thinking about my life and thinking about uh, many people I've seen um, you know, suffer, when they are not at the right place with the right people, and I see the hand of God misleading many and connecting them with the wrong people. Samson is an example. A very anointed man, somebody who was born for the righteous purposes of God, somebody that was anointed from the womb of his mother, somebody that was declared by God is a Nazarene. He was empowered by God. But when he grew up, sometime somewhere in his life, he lost that opportunity. And we see Samson connecting with the wrong people and also being in the wrong place. He connected with the friends from the Philistine. He went, um, uh, he went down to Gaza. He also got um, gulfs from Philistine land. And you know the story. Very tragic. The point is, he was in the wrong place with the wrong people. May the Lord have mercy upon us. Hallelujah. If you connect with the wrong people, and if you're in the wrong place, it may take long time for you to be able to benefit from this spiritual visitation. The point that, or the time that the Holy Spirit will uh, um, activate the seed that was planted by God himself in you for a righteous purpose. But don't forget what we read in Philippians. It is his will. And also it is his works. But you must be in the right place. I, I really feel we need to pray a prayer in Jesus' name. We shall pray a prayer on one level. And this prayer on one level, we want to pray for ourselves that we should never be with the wrong people. And we should never be at the, at the wrong place. And we need to pray a radical prayer. God, detach people who are with me or whom I interact with who are not in line with the calling of God. We need to pray a radical prayer that God may separate you from people and God may take you out of places that God may not be able to visit you. As long as you are in that place, he may not be able to visit you. As long as Samson was in Gaza, God could not visit him. The purposes of God could not be accomplished. Hallelujah. As long as Paul is not in Antioch, God is not going to activate you know, the seed of his righteous purpose. We may waste time, we may waste, we may waste um, years. And I pray in Jesus' name that you should not waste years. We need to pray a radical prayer, even at Mizpah. May God give us the right people and may God pluck out the wrong people. I mean, I'm serious about this one. I've come to see that many men of God, they missed it because of the people around them. The son of Solomon, the king, he missed it. He missed to enjoy the wealth, you know, the authority, the kingdom that his father um, uh, put in his hand because of his friend. He forsook the friends of his father and he sought guidance from his own age mate, the wrong people, and the kingdom of David was divided. So we can see 
It has taken many years. David took many years under the direction of God to build that kingdom. His father maintained it. The Bible says that uh, um, 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 Solomon expanded the kingdom and there was peace everywhere. This young man was given a ready baked bread, but he never ate it because of being with the wrong people. You need to understand it is dangerous. I feel somebody should pray in Jesus' name. Not only the prayer of today, but even prayer of tomorrow. That in your life, God will always bring the right people in Jesus' name. Can we just stand up if you, if you will in Jesus' name? And let's pray this radical prayer in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray in Jesus' name that Father in the name of Jesus, Father in the name of Jesus, may I always walk with the right people in my life. May I always walk with the right people in my life in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. May I, Father God, connect with the right people. Oh, Father, in Jesus' name. My God, my Father, disconnect me with the wrong people. Disconnect me with the wrong places. Disconnect me in the mighty name of Jesus. For that seed that comes from you to be activated, may I be led by your Holy Spirit to be in the right place with the right people. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, my God, my Father, direct your people, direct your people, direct your people, direct your people to connect with the right people for the activation of the calling of God in their life. Direct your servant to be with the right people. Direct pastors to be with the right people. Direct apostles with the right people. Father, the Bible says, you send a man from a faraway land. Father, send your people to the men of God, to the women of God in the mighty name of Jesus. I need you to help me, my brother. Hallelujah. I need you to help me to pray for Mizpah, to pray for this altar. Being the apostolic leader of this altar, I tremble, I tremble in the thought that the devil can bring the wrong people. I tremble with the thought that the devil can bring the wrong people. Oh, in the name of Jesus, oh, Father, close every door that no wrong people will come to this altar in the name of Jesus. Oh my God, my Father, close every door, close every path, close every highway in the name of Jesus. Don't allow the devil, Father God, to manipulate this altar to bring the wrong people in the name of Jesus. Rapaku, rapalaba, shita in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Brethren, let's agree together. Let's agree together that God will send people from a faraway land. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that God sends a man from a faraway land to come and fulfill his purposes. We know there is a godly purpose with his altar. And we know God uses men and women. God empowers his own people to work on various altars to accomplish various purposes. Me and you, God designed that we should be at Mizpah for those people who belong to this altar. But we know there are others. Jesus himself says, there are other people who belong to this altar, but they are not there. But they shall be coming. Let us pray that God will direct every good person, every person ordained by God in the mighty name of Jesus. They, he shall direct their step. They shall, never be, they, they shall never go wrong anywhere until they come to this altar in the mighty name of Jesus. And they will pray in Jesus' name that the Holy Spirit of God shall stretch his hand everywhere in the world to pick the people who are called according to this altar in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray tonight in Jesus' name. We call upon the name of the Lord Jesus to open up the doors, open up the ways, guide them and lead them in Jesus' name. Let's give Jesus a big mighty hand clap in Jesus' name. Let's take our seat a few minutes in Jesus' name. Don't forget, I'm speaking about spiritual accomplishment. There are things that the Holy Spirit will accomplish in a godly visitation. There are things he shall prepare 
also for a godly visitation. Before he accomplishes, he must prepare. Because the Bible says, it is him who wills to do according to his righteous purpose. The other thing that I want to bring to you, the works of the Holy Spirit in preparing the altar for a revival or a godly visitation is that the Holy Spirit will charge our heart with a spiritual awakening. The Holy Spirit will charge the hearts of people to have a spiritual awakening. Simply God will illuminate people's heart. Giving them the ability to understand godly truth. The Holy Spirit will charge the hearts of men with a desire to know. The Holy Spirit will charge people's heart with a hunger to, to be able to encounter God. Hallelujah. And this will bring a spiritual awakening. When that hunger comes to men and women of God, a godly hunger, a hunger of the presence of God, a thirst of the presence of God, it sort of awakens their spirit to the reality of what they are lacking. And then they proceed to desire. Psalms 27 says, one thing I desire and that one thing I seek. So this desire will mobilize people to seek. Hallelujah. That's the time you see people starting to come for prayer. They are hungry for prayer. People start fasting. People go beyond the normal when it comes to seeking God. You see people even refusing to go and work. That's frightening. People refuse to go to their own work. They lock themselves in their houses or they lock them. They go to the mountains. They go to the hills. They go to the forest. They, they, they lock themselves to, to the, the prayer center. Sometimes it looks crazy, but it is the work of the Holy Spirit. Others will be shaken through um, calamities in their, in their life to awaken them to godly reality. They will be shaken through calamities. Some will go very diff through difficult time in life so they can run, rather they can come to God and reservedly, without any reservation, they will spend time in the presence of God, thinking they are praying for their, themselves, but they are drawn by God through that drawing. Their spirit gets an awakening to the reality that it is only God who can it is only God who wills to do. Hallelujah. These people find themselves between two hard rocks. They have, no, they have no alternative but to stay in the presence of God. Desperation, desperation sets in. That person becomes desperate to have answers. They become desperate to have answers from God. When this happens, their spirit receives an illumination from heaven of the reality of what God can accomplish. And that illumination on enlightenment sort of puts the fire on and they, they move another step, hallelujah, of seeking God. And that's what I pray 
in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Paul says, I mean, Paul prays for the church in Ephesians chapter 1. He prays for them that may the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ give you a spirit of wisdom and he continues to pray for them that the Lord will enlighten let's just open hallelujah verse 18 chapter 1 verse 18 I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his an incomparable great power for us who believe that power is like the working of his mighty strength which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realm. Praise the name of the Lord. This is what I've been talking about. The Holy Spirit releases an enlightenment is what I called illumination. For you to start understanding the deeper meaning of the hope of our calling. The Holy Spirit shakes you up so that you may start desiring to know the power of God that you know raised Jesus from the dead. You start desiring to know the riches of our inheritance. And as you search for that, as you move in for that, you start encountering the power of God. You start encountering the mighty move of God. Your spirit, your spirit get, gets awakened to the reality of the truth in every word of God. Your spirit gets awakened to understand the truth in every promise of God. And the more your spirit gets awakened, the more you want to know more. The more you lose the human value and concentrate on spiritual values. And that's what I said when people come to that. They don't put value in things of this world. If it is their employment, I've seen people abandoning or rather absconding from their employment when they come to this uh, sort of uh, um, uh, point which to other human beings, to other church members is a dangerous point. People may call you crazy. They may call you confused. But you get drawn by God because you can see something that other people don't see. You can hear something that other people don't hear. Sometimes I want to put it this straight, that you yourself, you may not explain what you are going through. You may not give reasons. You have no words to give reasons. But you feel drawn into the presence of God. You feel an awakened person. You can see the realities other people don't see. But you have no words to explain. That is the time you see people changing the course of their life and they start pursuing that which other people don't see. Jesus gave an example. He said one man had a big chunk of land. But he came across a piece of land which had gold in it. So what he did, he went and sold his big land and came and bought this small piece of land 
And people thought he's crazy. And people thought he's not, he's not thinking wise. How can you sell that big chunk of land, maybe 100 acres, to come and buy one acre? But he knew in this one acre, there is gold. There is value. But other people did not know. People thought he's, he's not rational. But I want to tell you, brethren, he was, his spirit was awakened to the truth of the value of that land. Rather, that small piece of land. And he could sacrifice anything to get this piece, small piece of land. He could sell everything he had to come and buy this small piece of land. Let me tell you, brethren, if you're in that position, I want to encourage you, push on. You are seeing something other people don't see. There is a value you can see in serving God that other people don't see. But I want to tell you for sure, you will never miss to benefit from the value. If your spirit has been awakened by the Holy Spirit into the spiritual realities, then, my brother, my sister, even if we don't see it, and you can see it, I want to encourage you, move ahead. We shall follow you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. There are things of the Spirit. Until you receive them, they are hidden to the normal human mind. Until you come to that point of the revelation of God, people may not know, people may not see what you see. There is a point that we may not see what you see. We may not hear what you, he you heard. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit came down to visit Paul on the, his way to Damascus, he was going to do a very bad mission, arresting the Christian and killing them and jailing them. When the voice came down, when God came to visit, the other people did not understand it. When Daniel was praying down the riverside, the other people did not understand, but himself, he saw the angel, he heard the angel, he understood the meaning, but other people did not see. Yes, and I'm praying for you to have an awakened spirit. I'm praying for myself to have an awakened spirit. I'm praying this time, may we have an awakened spirit to the reality of the truth of the purposes of God. This is a deep thing. Brethren, if you don't understand it, just ask God to reveal to you what I'm talking about. Every calling of God, every ministry has an, an innermost, a hidden secret of God. As the Bible says, that which is revealed belongs to us and our children. But that which is not revealed belongs to God. There are things that belong to God, yet they are ours. Until you come to a point where God will feel free to release it to you, it still belongs to God, but it belongs to us. And that's why we are sitting in the presence of God, like Mary of Bethany, waiting upon him through prayer, through intercession, through fasting. That's why have, the Holy Spirit has mobilized us this month and I've guided and led you that this should be a month of focusing to God like Paul and Barnabas and the other people in the church of Antioch. The Bible records they were there for a year reading the word of God, worshiping God, fasting and doing prayer. They were there for a whole year, days in, days out, until when People who lose value of the time to do what they like most. Did you hear what I said? Until when people who lose value of that time and take that time and give it unto God and spend that time in the presence of God because they have seen something that others don't see. And I'm praying like Paul, may God open up your eyes and may God open up my eyes. 
may God enlighten you to see the hope that God has over us in our calling. I'm praying that God will awaken our spirit because an illuminated spirit is an awake spirit because of the light of God. I pray in Jesus' name that God will illuminate your heart with a spirit of knowledge and no spirit of understanding so that you may be able to know the power of God that works through us in this calling so that you may dedicate yourself. You may dedicate yourself in the mighty name of Jesus. I thought I should go for another point, but also here, I'm feeling you need to have time of prayer. I feel you need to have a serious time of prayer. Hallelujah. To pray for God to illuminate your heart with the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of understanding. You really need an awakened spirit. For an awakened spirit is a revived spirit. This illumination will give your heart a sort of revival. Hallelujah. Will give your heart a new lease of life. Will give you an activation of your, of, of your spiritual life. You may be saved, you may be following Jesus, but you just live an ordinary life. You don't live an excited life, an expectant life. You don't see the real inner meaning of the, your calling. You don't walk on that path that God has designed for you. You need an awakened spirit to see that. When you see that, you will long for it. You will go for it. When you see that, you will be ready to sacrifice what you consider your best to attain. Rather, what you consider to be good for you to attain the best. There is something better than where you are. There is something better than what you have. There is another place better than what you know, where you know rather. May God, may God help you. There is another level of the ministry better than what we know. There is another level that I desire. I believe there is something somewhere that I have not attained. I feel like Paul, I have not attained. There is something I want to strive to get there. That's why I'm spending my time, my brain, focusing into the visitation of God. That's why I'm, 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 I'm putting my spirit alert to hear from the Lord. That's why I'm spending time talking to God that is in prayer. That's why I'm spending time worshiping God for, I mean, he is my God. That's why, you know, brethren, I feel I need more lot of years to be able to attain everything that God has purposed. Because I really believe that where I am is not the end. I really believe there is something better than everything that I've ever gone through in the ministry. I feel in the name of Jesus there is some pleasures of God I have not enjoyed. Yes, I have seen people getting healed. I have seen people getting saved. I have seen sign wonders and miracles. I mean, but there is something better than that. There is another level better than this level of this ministry where I minister called Mispa. You may come in here and say, God has blessed Apostle Jesse Karanja. No, there is something beyond what you see. And that's what I'm desiring. That's what I'm praying God. Illuminate my heart with the truth that comes from you. Oh, Father God, in Jesus' name. That's why I'm praying, Father, open up my eyes. I may see the hope of our calling. When you called me, you had a hope. And this was not the end of the hope. No, God. I believe as you live it, you are renewed every time. And I believe, Father God, there is something new even right now. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that I shall not miss it. 
Oh, Father, let the ears never allow me to miss it. Not my friends who allow me to miss it. Oh, Father, I don't want to feel satisfied with the position I am today. Oh, Father, I don't want to remain here as a, med as a mediocrity. I don't want to go round and round in one place. I want to move to your goodness. I want to move into your newness. I am believing of greater things that men have never seen. I am believing of things that no ears have ever heard. I'm believing in the mighty name of Jesus. You are stepping my foot on a better ground. Yes, I've been there, but I want to be somewhere a bit better. I believe, Father God, you are opening new ways every day, every time in our life in Jesus' name. Everybody lift up your hand and I pray for you in Jesus' name that where you are, God will push you as he said to Simon Peter, put your boat push your boat a bit to the middle of the lake and there they caught many fishes. May my God push you much more inside in the mighty name of Jesus. There is a place my brother, there is a place my sister that I desire that you be there. Oh I pray in Jesus name that your heart will be illuminated with the truth of the calling of God. That your heart will be illuminated with the truth of the reality of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Father in the name of Jesus let the heavens open up. Let the heaven open up for your people. Let the heaven open up in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the heaven open up in the name of Jesus. This is our night my God my Father. This is our night Holy Spirit of God. This is our night Oh Master. I pray for an awakened spirit. I pray for an awakened spirit to the reality of every promise you have promised my God my Father and I pray for an awakened spirit I pray for an awakened spirit in the mighty name of Jesus to every every covenant that you have spoken upon us at this altar in the mighty name of Jesus I pray my God my Father I pray my God my Father for an awakened spirit that I may know what is in store for my family in the name of Jesus there are greater things that we have seen today. They are greater position for our children in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Father in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray tonight. If you can't be able to just pray for yourself. Pray for yourself an awakened spirit to the reality of the truth of uh, God's revelation. An awakened spirit to the truth of God's uh, promises. An awakened spirit to the truth of the covenant of God. An awakened spirit Rapaka Shoka is a revived spirit. Is a revived spirit. A revived spirit is full of joy. Is full of expectancy. Oh Repeka Tolaba in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Father, I call upon your holy name on this altar. I call upon your name on this altar. In the mighty name of Jesus, can somebody help me to pray? Help me to pray. 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 This is our season. It shall never pass by. This is our season on this altar. This is our season. Wherever you are, even where you are watching at home, whether you are watching at your office, whether you are watching in the hospital, whether you are watching in prison, this is your season of newness. This is your season of newness. Something new is happening. Rapaka Robo in the mighty name of Jesus. Rapolobo, Shatalaba, Shetalaba, Repe, Rapalaba, Sotolobo, Narabasaneme. Ramalama selemene mi antala ba selemene mi tolo bo shalama rapala ba sakara ba selemene mi antala ba lama awakened spirit awakened spirit is what i desire an awakened spirit in the mighty name of jesus May the Lord release this grace upon your life. May the Lord release this grace upon your life. May the Lord release this grace upon your life in the name of Jesus. This is the night of your visitation. Your ministry can never remain the same forever and ever. You can never be going through the same problem forever and ever. There is a truth of God that needs to be revealed to each one of us in Jesus' name. I give you a few minutes. Just pray for yourself.
as I pray for myself. An awakened spirit is a revived spirit. An awakened spirit is a revelation of Jesus. An awakened spirit receives the revelation of Jesus as a risen son of the living God.